Hey guys, it's Morgan coming to you with another tech video. Uh, today we are going to be doing a few things. Uh, this is going to be fun. So we're going to be servicing the suspension with a 6500 kit in the forks. Uh, this is my 2023 300 Loretta. Um, and it's got the 6500 kit in the forks that we installed in Valve for T with TBT specs. Uh, they've been amazing. They're awesome. It's time to service them. I've probably got 40, 50 hours on them. So time to change oil and seals, get that all dialed in. Uh, but also, if you have 6500 kit, you know that changing the clickers sucks because it's right, it's the, in the you can't get to it. Um, so that's annoying. I have the kit to put actual adjusters on there and we're gonna have to do something with the air bleeders because those are gonna be in the way. We'll have to figure that out. I don't know what we're gonna do there. <clears throat> but uh, so we're gonna get that on. I'm also gonna show you a new tool that I have been developing with the guys at Moto Minded. Uh, I came up with the idea. They uh, made it happen in real life because they have 3D printers and I am here to offer it to you guys if you want it. It's, uh, you're just gonna have to wait and see what it looks like. So let me pull this bike up, yank the forks off, we'll go over to the bench and get to work. <laughs> Boom, all right, let's start with this one. I'm not actually gonna show you both forks because they're identical. So uh, this video is just gonna cover one fork. Uh, so here we go, here's the problem. That's really hard to get to. That's gonna be in the way. It's kind of a pain in the butt. The best set of forks I think I've ever used, honestly. I love them, but this is annoying. So we're gonna sort that out. All right guys, starting off like a normal fork video, chopped up in our soft jaws. Gonna take the air bleeder out. Use our radical little uh, Nipex uh, pliers wrenches to get that thing off. Guys, if you don't have a set of these pliers wrenches, you need them. I've got every size they make. Well, actually I need a bigger size. They make a huge size. I don't have that yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're rad. So I'm probably gonna just put the normal bleeders back in here because I just don't think I'm gonna be able to find a way to put the clicker in here and still clear this. So I'll have a set of these. Uh, if you guys, anybody wants them, uh, hit me up, I'll mail them to you for free. They're awesome, they're System Tech Racing. Uh, I, the problem is I think they only fit these in the cone valve forks, so. All right, gotta take the four cards off. I'm using the, uh, I think they're the AF or something parts. I forget which the full wrap protective fork guards. They're awesome. They've been already a lifesaver. Save the legs of my forks. These things are rad. All right. Normal KTM uh, top clamp. Now I got a drain pan guys. Here's the thing. Normally, you just put this upside down and you gotta push down on it, right? To get the, um, to take this off, get the, anyway. That's fine as, if there's no uh, clicker on this end, but when, I'm gonna have a clicker very soon, when you do, you gotta be very careful like not to push down on it, you gotta have something. So the guys at Motor Mind and I have been working on this. Super simple little tool, goes on like that. Then you can push down, I'll show you. Boom, see how that it holds it up off the thing? You can push on it really hard, nothing happens to it. So you got a 19 millimeter. Break that loose. Got a race tech cartridge holder. Uh, now, like I said, you're gonna push down. It's not gonna hurt anything. This is deep. You gotta go way deep for these. <laughs> it's a lot more of a push than like a KYB. Which again, let me show you. That thing is helping a ton. That is so cool, guys. I love it. 17 millimeter wrench. Now we're gonna break this loose. Actually, I forgot, I wanna count my clickers. 
get in a hurry when it's my own bike, but so 15 clicks on the rebound. And I really want to save these settings because it's working really, really well right now. So 15 out on rebound. Out of the way. There you go. You guys saw how much force I had to put on that. And the top of my fork is totally safe. So 6,500 kits, they come with these uh, adapters at the end. Stoked on that, guys. All right, now I'm gonna take the cartridge apart because to install these um, adjusters, you gotta take everything apart. You can't just screw it in there. It doesn't work like that. So now what we're gonna need is our preload uh, adjuster holder and then our special tool for the inside of the cartridge. All right, guys, there's our special race tech tool. Boom, goes in there. And actually, I think my preload adjuster thing is actually in my wolf vest because I was using it to do some adjusting. That's okay. These things are so cool, they will not hurt anything because you watch them, they go parallel. They don't, they don't you know, clamp like a normal pair of pliers. So get on there like that. Now we're just going to push up on the rod, pushes the inner guy out. Set him here. We're going to drain this, pump it a bunch of times, get all the oil out of it. Actually looks pretty good, but that's because I did it earlier than a lot of you guys do. <laughs> and actually, I'm sure a lot of you guys are great. Uh, I just have a lot of customers that don't do fork services until the things leak. <laughs> so, um, all right, now we can set this out of the way. Boom, now we have our uh, inner cartridge, our compression uh, valve. Our <clears throat> so we gotta replace that. So to do that, we're gonna have to take all of this apart. Check it out here, Solid Performance makes a lovely little kit for it. So we're going to Dig in. Show you guys what's all in here. So, there we go. There's our two clickers. There's the adjusters. Not sure what these are for. They might be for. Now uh, they're not for. They're not for the bleed screw because they're too small. So, um, maybe they're for something different that has that. But um, that's okay. Let's disassemble this now. So, oh, take our 17 here, go. And if you guys are tuners, then, you know, you, you still want to be careful so you don't have to fiddle with it, but you can be a little bit more uh, laissez-faire, not laissez-faire, but a little more lackadaisical on taking this apart. Um, but if you're not, you want to be super duper careful to keep all this in order, guys. Because if you don't, you will have a mess on your hand, a bunch of shims laying everywhere. So just, I take a skinny little thing like that, put it down in the middle. We'll take the whole thing off. Everything. So that keeps it all nice and happy. Now we got to take the post off. It's 15. All right, now, so we got a 15 on here. I'm gonna put our holder back on here. We're gonna twist these apart. Chalk this up in the soft jaw so that I can hold that way. I can keep multiple hands on stuff to hold it straight.
All right, now we got our post off. Lots of Loctite on that guy, so that means we're gonna Loctite the heck out of it going back together. And I like to just keep everything in order. So I don't forget what's happening. All right, we got one more uh, nut to break loose. That's 14 right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my holder and I'm gonna chalk it upside down in here to set that down on there. Then we got our 14. Way we can use extra hand to hold everything nice and steady. There we go. All right, so that is gonna be a pain. We're gonna use just a little bit of heat. And we have all new O-rings that comes in the kit. So but we're just gonna be nice and easy just to heat that thread locker up. There we go. So I didn't even get that too hot to touch. So now we are dangerously close. Oh, and by the way, I already counted these clicks. Sorry, off camera. Um, now we got to get that little guy out, which is just going to push. Yeah, it's just going to push down. There we go. So there is that. All right, now we'll take our new part. We're going to get our O-ring where it goes. See, you can see it's got an O-ring there. All right, guys, there's also these little detents in here. You got to get those out as a spring and uh, two balls, and then you go into the other one. And they're kind of just held in there with some grease. So now we got our new guy. Put spring in one side. Ball in that side. Put the ball in the other side. Now we have detents. Now we're going to push this back up in. Let's push it in like that. What? All good to go. I'm just talking to the camera. You're good. Oh, you're fine. So there we go. And now we're going to take our clicker. And then I don't know why I didn't know that, but that is, that's already got some thread locker on it. One second. Uh, we'll find you a bolt here in just a second, dude. Tighten that down. And it's gonna click. It, it, it's not gonna stop clicking because there's nothing against it. This, that is what would stop it normally. So it's on there good enough for now. Now we're gonna start reassembling. All right, guys, now we're gonna start uh, assembling. I'm gonna use our stuck nut thread locker. I'm gonna put uh, that's a little bit. I don't need to do too much of it. I'm using the red, which is the high strength. Whatever they had on here was definitely high strength. So now here's the deal, guys. Um, yeah. What I like to do, a little bit of grease on that thing. Then we're going to put it in here, push it nice and tight down in there so that holds it. Then we're going to come down here. We got our thread locker on there. And if everything works right, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to thread on as soon as it gets to it. It's gonna be a little bit. Make sure that that will bottom out. 
like that. Because the important thing, guys, here is to make sure that you can bottom that out. Uh, because that's how you always want to set your clickers is all the way in until it bottoms out. It shuts the port, and then you click back out. So there we go. Now take this out of here. We're going to clean this really good and get some lock, uh, thread locker on there. Take our stuck nuts. I'm just going to rotate this up. So we take that off. We don't have a screw in it. We got that off so we can get our uh, holder or our tool on it. There we go. Now we are ready to continue the assembly. So we're going to go with this guy first. Drop him down in. Then we got our needle. Should sit in about like that. All right, guys. So once you get this back on, you want to make sure you take your clicker and you your adjuster and you back it all the way out. So I already did, um, but because. If you don't, this will stick out too much. And when you put this all together and it goes up into this post, it'll actually bind up. So I make sure you back that all the way out. There we go. Let me reassemble. And put some more thread locker on that and put this together. What's happening? I am. <laughs> it's a curse. <laughs> what are you up to, man? Curse, man. Oh, I'm about to mount a new tire, man. Okay. I'm about to buy a thing of moose juice from you, man. Nice. The actual moose juice? Because look, I have something called moose juice. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> this I got to test, but it's the. Uh, plushy, so it's like, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's extra on the plushie. Extra on the plushie. Let me slide this together real fast before I forget what I'm doing. No worries. Um the uh Yeah, this dude sent me that to test. He's a just a guy. He's got another job and he races a lot and goes through Lots of tires and mooses and things, and he's like, man, there's got to be something fucking better and cheaper we can do. And his background's, I guess, petrochemical. Okay. So he came up with that stuff. I don't know what it's supposed to cost yet. Like, he just sent it to me to right. test, but... Um, it's supposed to work with, like, it's supposed to, yeah, work with anybody um, and be uh, way longer lasting, he's saying. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, got everything... Back together, happy here. Now we're gonna bleed this uh, with some five weight uh, KYB uh, fork oil. I'm gonna pour it in here, and I gotta go get some. Pour it in, bleed it up and down, uh, and then we're gonna install the cartridge. Not today. I went a little nuts. Poured way too much in there. <laughs> it's all right. So I'm just pumping this up and down to get all the bubbles out. Gonna. Uh, On the amount, guys, it's not super critical. There's a ring down in here, there's a, a shoulder, and you want it basically just above that, and then it will actually bleed out uh, any excess once you get it in there. I'll show you how that works.
Now, what you want to do is I'm going to, for the time being, just put this bleeder back in here because I'm trying to hunt down <laughs> my old uh, screws. I haven't found them yet, so that's interesting, but that's okay. Now, we're going to push this all the way. You want to make sure that it comes all the way back out by itself. I feel like I might have just a little bit of air in there. So. All right, guys, so hang on one second, I'm filming this. Pour a little bit extra in there. Yeah. Now, when we install this, it's going to be, it's going to stop and kind of be hard. That's okay. We're going to put it up in the soft jaws, nice and easy, because we're not holding it with the jaws. We're just kind of resting it on there. Now, we'll get our tool, take that back off to get it out of the way. And now we're going to have to push. There we go. Hard to get that started. There we go. Tighten that down. Now when we do the compression like this, you hear that sound? That was it bleeding a little bit off. There we go. Let's get that little extra out. And if some of that ends up inside the outer tubes, it's no big deal. Change your fork level or oil height just a tiniest bit, but not, not enough to notice. So nice, as long as this comes all the way out by itself, you're good to go. You don't hear any bubbles or things like that. That's bled. Now change the fork seals out and we'll put this whole thing back together. Looking at tell you right, a girl came up to me, saw my bike on the back of the truck and was so excited. She had a 23 XC 250. Oh, nice. Her excitement, her joy, made me happy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Any room in my truck. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, those are the only ones I know that fold up that far. And, God, they're nice. It's, yeah, for, uh, so I used the dual compound SKFs. They were great, no leaks, no nothing. Um, I definitely recommend them. Uh, as far as I think they probably did better in the mud than uh, normal seals. But today I actually don't have any, so I'm just going with uh, stock uh, KTM, which are actually SKFs also. The stock KTM package, like you just saw me open up, those are SKF seals. Um, they're just black, not green. So no big deal. I like, I do like these kits because. They come with new travel indicators, new washers, and new circlips too. So there. Got our seal bullet, oil seal, circlip, dust seal, washer, outer bushing. Bushings look great, by the way. I don't need to replace them. Inner bushing. Now we're going to go back together. Drive the bushing into place. Then you drive the seal into place. You always want to drive that bushing first because if you're driving the seal and the bushing together, you can damage that seal as it's, that bushing is trying to find its home. So I'll put our circlip in, push it the rest of the way in, being careful to not nick the seal. Slap that home. Now we take our cartridge, take our new super cool Highland Cycles tool, put it upside down in the pan, spring, like that, put our adapter back on. Drop this all on and you gotta kind of just make sure it finds its home. You guys will figure it out. There's a hex in there. You just gotta make sure it finds its home. 
now. Find our cartridge holder. Push down real hard. There we go. I want to make sure this nut is all the way down. Take our adjuster rod. We put it in there. Always want to push on it just a little bit, make sure it's springy. Bottom bolt. Seventeen. Nineteen. Just a little bit of a bump to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. That. There we go. That tool, guys, is rad. It keeps everything safe up there. I absolutely love it. All right, now we're going to put 375 cc's of fork oil in it, and we'll be good to go. Now that's my spec uh, for me. Um, obviously different people will take different specs of oil, but there you guys go. If you want to add clickers to your 6500 kit, which I highly recommend because they really are a nightmare to get to when you're actually out riding and trying to do some testing and tuning, um, it's way nicer. Uh, but make sure you keep your <laughs> old bleed screws. I still don't know where those are. We're gonna have to probably get some new ones, unfortunately. I probably either gave them to someone or threw them away, not thinking ahead. Right on, guys. Uh, so here's what it looks like. That will go like that, and then we'll have clickers we can get to. Like I said, i got to put a screw in there. Uh, I wish I hadn't gotten rid of those. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll be good to go. We can actually click these things when we're out on the trail. So um, I hope you guys like that video. Uh, if you guys are interested in this cool part, I'm really excited about this thing. I still don't know what we're going to charge for the thing or even what it's actually called yet. Um, but if you're interested, email me, morgan at highland-cycles.com. It'll be right here on the um, screen. Uh, and you'll get you on the list for when we actually release these things. I think they're really cool. Uh, if you've got this style fork, KYB forks, uh, any, any twin chamber fork where you got to flip the thing upside down and get it apart. This thing's awesome. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you on the next one.